set now. <laughs> Kingston making his debut. Okay. Hello, everybody. This is Ask Keisha and Mo. I am Keisha this week. I'm not going to be anybody else. And I'm Mo, as always. We're at a new location, new studio, Studio Mo, <laughs> this week. Um, at the end of this, I guess Kingston will make his debut to the Ask Keisha and Mo show. Y'all have heard a lot about him. So, He'll be in here way before the show is over. Right, whimpering. So, okay, let's get into it. We have a lot of questions. I think we have like seven this uh, episode, so let's get into it. Okay, first question says, hey, Keisha and Mo, you guys are amazing at... Amazing... At people? At helping people. Oh, helping people by giving tough love and great advice. I have been very hesitant about even talking about this because it seems dumb. But I am hoping you can help me. I'm going to be a sophomore this year. As of now, I'm living with my sister while my mom is on her way to move up here with us. Me and my sister are 12 years apart and she can give and she can give some great advice. But as of late, it's just been different. Long story short, my sister believes I am gay. <laughs> Mind you, neither of us have anything against gay slash lesbian people. It's just what she thinks I am. So before I jump in, here here is just how the situation started. Back in Florida, where I used to live, I played basketball for my high school. Majority of the team was gay, and so it felt normal to talk about which female celebrities were attractive and which weren't. So when I moved with my sister, sometimes I would slip up and say that I found some female celebrities attractive. Then it would pop up in her mind that I was gay. So my dilemma is, how do I cope with this? Just reading slash typing this sounds dumb. But even if you can't exactly help me with this, I'd appreciate any feedback you can give me. Thanks in advance. And this person wanted to remain anonymous. Okay. Um, my question is, are you having... I know you said something about coping. Um, I'm thinking that you're trying to uh, overcome how people perceive you see i told you uh, <laughs> anywho um are you i mean is there or do you have any questions about your sexuality i know that you're just going into your sophomore year of high school so you're still fairly young and um i mean do you find men attractive i'm not saying that your sister is right but it seems like you don't know either because you still never said anything about like what your preference is um, from what I took from it, I don't think that you are gay. I think that you're just wondering how to approach your sister with the situation because she thinks that you are. My thing is with your sister, if you was gay, like Monique said, if you don't have, if your sister has nothing against gay or lesbian people, then what the fuck does it matter to her? You shouldn't have to prove your sexuality to anybody. Mm -hmm. Me and Monique, and uh, all my girlfriends be like, oh, that is a bad bitch or that she is cute or she is gorgeous. That right. doesn't mean that we like to munch on vaginas. No. So, continue to do you. If your sister has any issues with the way that you speak and the things that you say, then that's something that she has to deal with, not you. And just go to your sister and tell her, like, you don't appreciate that. It's bothering you. Yeah. It has to be bothering you for you to write us. Yeah, exactly. Okay, next question. Hope we helped. Uh, don't. The next question. Hello to the very gorgeous Keisha and Mo. Hey. hey. This is one of my friends on Twitter. I love him so much. The videos on the Color Me Pink page continue to provide the humor that I truly need on a regular basis. <laughs> do it and do it big, ladies. The name I'm going to go with is Ross, since I put a bunch of my friends onto your videos and I don't need them nosy bitches up in my damn business. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put it frankly. I'm about to be 29, have a well-paying job, my own apartment, and when I look in the mirror, I can truly smile at my reflection. I've been celibate for almost two years and I've been making feeble attempts at dating. Down. My dilemma is that the men, mainly boys, <laughs> I've been talking to, <laughs> only want to hit it, and I'm not here for that. Can I find a man that can fuck my mind before he does anything to my body? Is that too much to ask? Back in my younger days, I was pretty fast, and that didn't get me too far. At this point in my life, I'm completely over the poetry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. My body is a castle, so call me Papa D. The guards can get them pets and hoes out of my courtyard. I've been cheated on in both of my past relationships and I've been hesitant with guys. It's hard to know whether or not they're genuinely interested in getting to know me or if they want to jiggle my damn head boy. Okay. Oh, over you. My question really is, I have the same problem. <laughs> my question really is, am I being unrealistic with my expectations of men? I know I should open up a little bit, but I don't feel the need to take my clothes off for that. And I'm trying not to adopt it. Sorry, sorry so ghetto again. Sorry. 
Your dog be making a lot of noise this whole video. Continue. Which I found out was right. <laughs> Continue. Sorry. Oh, I need to work. Okay. Oh. But I don't feel the need to take my clothes off of that. I'm trying not to adapt that men ain't shit mantra. But mm. damn it, it's difficult. Thanks so much, ladies. Keep doing your thing. Y'all deserve all the blessings. Miss Gorgeous Keisha C in LA. Let's get some Roscoe's chicken and waffles. Hell yeah. Y'all ain't eating no Roscoe's without me. I'm sorry. Sincerely, Ross. Okay. Um... I don't think that you're wrong for having high expectations uh, about the men that you date. I'm the same way. She's single right now. Monique is single. And ain't nobody getting up in this castle until they knock down all the guards, all the horses, all the king's men, all the duchess, all the ladies, all of them. Like, you ain't going to see this high box. So, continue to keep your legs closed, merry men. <laughs> because... <laughs> Uh, you don't want to just be having sex with people just for sex. Because that's all that's going to end up being the sex. So, continue to be selective with who you uh, let into your bedroom. Let into your life. Uh, you have to be that way. Especially nowadays with all these diseases and things and going I'm, on. Yes, 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 yes. Keep your legs closed. Um, um, same thing here. Just go ahead and... Uh Keep on being selective. Uh, don't ignore those red flags. I know I remind y'all about that all the time. And shit is so important because you save yourself a lot of time and so much heartache and a whole bunch of other shit that can come with that. Um, you got a well-paying job. You don't need no gold diggers. People mm -hmm. look for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, They can come lay up on you. You don't want that in your life. Yeah. So just keep on doing you and... Uh, and keep a... Uh, what is it? The chastity belt? Keep, keep that on your shit. <laughs> and throw away the key. Yeah. Okay, next question. Hey, Keisha Mo, my name is B. First off, I love your videos, and y'all are so beautiful and real. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I have a friend who I don't know what to do with, as in cut the friendship off or hold on till Jesus come. <laughs> Laugh all out. She and I have been friends for three years, and we're really close to this summer. At the beginning of summer, I was in a depressed stage dealing with all kinds of personal issues, such as school, finances, and bitch-ass niggas. <laughs> During this time, I stayed to myself a lot and examined myself and the people around me to see why I was stuck. Good idea. However, soon I said, fuck it. I'm going to do something about it. So I got myself together and I started reading my Bible, praying, basically trusting God, taking summer classes, working out, and getting rid of a bum-ass nigga. Amen. You get an applause from us. Kinks and applause. Say hi, Kinks. Um... Which brings me to my friend. She has been talking slash fuck buddies with this dude who is now her boyfriend for quite a while. Now, I ain't the friend to get into people's relationships, but I couldn't let her go down the wrong path. The dude that she is with does nothing but smoke, kick it with his friends, and kick it with her. She revealed to me that he has two kids. <laughs> Remind you, we are all only 20 to 22 years old that he doesn't take care of. But thinks because his mom could take, but thinks because his mom takes care of them, it's all good. I told her that if this is what she really wants, she needs to have a talk with him, not only about the kids, but also growing up because I couldn't deal with the BS. Trying to get her to see that if he can't love his own, see how he going to love you. Amen. But she ain't listen. But stay com uh, come, but stay come complaining about the same old shit. And I'm the type of person that only speak once on the subject. That was about a month ago since then i have been keeping my distance because god has taken me to another level and i ain't got time now as i'm getting ready to graduate from college i don't contact contact her at all but once a week she texts me hit me up on social networks with what you doing i keep the convo short because i don't have issues with her but at the same time just like uh she admits um you tell her to go left she'll go right mm. my question is should i stick with her in hopes of getting it together or just leave it where it's at to avoid the oh you think you somebody now drama i want her to accomplish her dreams but right now she's moving nowhere hope this was wasn't too long and all over the place love b um i don't think that um i don't think you should try to say the relationship this is one of the cases where you need to love this bitch from a distance she is not going anywhere and you don't want that to hinder you from anything that you're trying to do i think you're doing the right thing you don't have any hate against this person you just don't want to be bothered with that bullshit you've outgrown this friendship and it's time to move on i 
am a little bit different. I say since y'all have been friends for so long, continue to be her friend. But like Mo said, feed her with a long handle spoon. I would just flat out tell her, look, I've given you advice over this shit. I really don't honestly want to hear it anymore. If this is what you want for yourself, then that is on you. You deal with it. But as far as our friendship, we just need to have a friendship where we laugh and kick it with each other. I don't want to hear nothing about this nigga. Now, if she then tells you, well, oh, I don't want that type of friendship, then there's nothing else you can do about it. You set your boundaries. You told her how you feel. You tell her that you love her and that you want to continue the friendship, but you can't deal with all this complaining and shit about this sorry-ass nigga. If this is what she wants, then let her go ahead on and do it. You've given her advice. Like I said, I could say continue being a friend, but deal with her on only a friendship type level and yeah, not that's what deal I'm with her. I'm not stuff. saying like just totally dismiss oh, okay. her. But this just like you sometimes you outgrow friendships and people don't understand when it's time to get you know, like people learn later. Like yeah. you're all you're all twenty to twenty two years old. It's a lot of people that ain't thinking about their fucking future mm -hmm. at, this, at that point. So just let her go and she'll pick up later, but and you will get that. You think you're too good now. You yeah. definitely gonna and get you that. Need to tell you I am too good. And I'm too good for the bullshit and you need to be too. Ain't nobody got time to be dealing with nobody that got two kids don't take care of them. His mama take care of them more than he do. Ain't nobody got time for that. So if that's the type of life that she wants, then she is welcome to it. You're not. I mean, and you know what? You know, another thing that you can do every time she calls, because I do this all the damn time. If she call you uh, talking about this nigga, just uh, find out, like, you know, some people call you and they'll talk about something else and then slide on into whatever going on with this. Girl, get your ass off the phone and do it every time she does. And if she'll like, get oh, it. Girl, I got to call you back. Mm -hmm. Jesus calling. <laughs> I got to click up. Jesus just called me, girl. I got to call you back, girl. So that's what we say. Next question. Is this the point? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Keisha Mo, I love you. I, I fell in love too. with Keisha through her books and then on Facebook. But Mo, I fell in love with you through Torn and watching you on YouTube. I don't know if you'll still if you do ask it. Do ask Keisha and Mo, but I really need some advice. Mo, I was you when I was 16. I fell in love with my son, father, and we continued our destructive relationship for 11 years. That wasn't Mo. Oh. That wasn't Mo. I don't know what book you read. No, y'all was going He had a baby by someone else and was abusive mentally and physically. I know, I know I should have enjoyed one because I... <laughs> we would have all been fighting. If a nigga hit me, it's going to be the last time he hit anybody. <laughs> hey, it's still nigga got hammer time, though. I know I should have left, but I was comfortable with him. He was all I knew. Then I read Torn. It was crazy because it seemed like everything I was going through was right there in the book down to still being friends with his mom and getting head from his friend. But I got it from a cousin. Okay. Anyway, after I had my son, this boy named Tyshawn from around the way would try to talk to me. But since I was still with my son's father, I never gave him the time of day. We ended up losing contact. And years later, he hit me up on Facebook and we started talking. It was a little... It was a little while after I read Torn. Keisha, I just started reading your books like two years ago. Sorry. So I said, fuck it and gave it a try. I really liked him and I hadn't felt like that in a long time. So I told my son, father, the truth that I didn't love him anymore and I was done. Me and Tyshawn started a relationship, but it was, wasn't no fa fairy tale. I had to deal with the cheating and the not coming home at night. I was calling bitches snapping. Me and my sisters bust him in the head with the bottle. Shit was real until finally I said I was done. Now that I had two fair relationships, I just want to start over. I want to leave Jersey and move to, what's that, North Carolina? This is something that I've been thinking about for a while, and I think now is the time to do it. I'm 27 and think that if I don't go now, I will never go. I just want a new start around new people. So I guess my question is, what do you think I should do, stay or go? Uh, I want to start off. First of all, the problem ain't with the men you're dating. The problem is with you. You keep on attracting the ancient motherfuckers because something is broken and missing in you. It mm -hmm. don't matter if you move to the fucking North Pole, Antarctica, China, Spain, Cuba, you still going to find another man that's going to come right. into your life and beat your ass, that physically abuse you. That doesn't change your decision you. and fuck that man. Yeah, yeah that, you have to change you, honey, because you keep on attracting these people into your life. So there's something broken in you. There's something that you need to figure out why, why you keep on messing with men that physically abuse you, that cheat on you, that mentally abuse you. You need to deal with that. It don't matter where you go. Get yourself together before you get in now another relationship because you don't need to be in nobody's relationship. You need to be in a relationship with God and that is mm -hmm. it. And with a counselor and trying to figure out why you keep on dealing with men that are toxic because there's something toxic and rotten in you that you need to pray the fuck up out of you and get some common sense. So that's my thing. That's what I got to say. 
But she pretty much said everything that I wanted to say. I mean, you can. I know a whole bunch of people that ain't good for me right here in St. Louis, and that don't mean I got to move. That just mean I got to distance myself yeah. from the shit that ain't good for me. And stop dealing with people that ain't about shit. But surround yourself with positive people, y'all. We keep on telling y'all mm -hmm. that positivity brings positivity. Negativity brings negativity, people. And once again, this week, we're going to tell you love does not hurt. Love is not full of drama, folks. Get that in your brain. Next question. Um, hi, Keisha Mo. I would like to stay anonymous if that's okay. But I have something I need to tell y'all. So I've been in a relationship with this guy for about one year. Oh, I got some shit for you, ma'am. Um, for, <laughs> with this guy for about one year, he is everything. He's respectful, loving, caring, hilarious, and compassionate. He's also a single father. Uh, you don't see a lot of single fathers out here. The fact that he is in love with his daughter and stepped up to the plate when the baby mama bounced makes me admire him even more. Hmm. The mother took off after the baby was one years old. My boyfriend told me that nobody has been able to contact her, not even her family. He also says that he has no feelings for her. <laughs> but when I bring her up, he gets really emotional and shuts down. He love her. <laughs> so this is when it gets interesting. We plan to move in with each other and slowly I was moving my things into his home. I didn't just want to rush right into his spot, but I go to his home to bring some stuff in and the baby mama sitting in the living room playing with the baby. <laughs> and my crazy ass mind, I'm like, hold the fuck up. Why are you here? Isn't your crazy ass supposed to be lost in a different state? My boyfriend later explained that she's back and needs a place to stay so she can get back on her feet. Okay, I understand that, but this bitch has been in his house for months now. Every time I come over, she's giving me dirty looks. <laughs> you don't understand. You ain't a side girlfriend. Yeah, you ain't got the... Y'all don't go together no more. They are back together. Oh, um, <laughs> every time I come over, she's giving me dirty looks. Yeah, because you in her house. They ain't no bad. Saying smart comments, making sure I can't get near or to see the baby. And I'm just like, bitch, if it wasn't for me taking your spot as a mother, the girl would never know what a mother love feels like. You have not been this child's mother. Get that in your head. It's gotten so bad where at the baby's birthday party, me and the baby mama got into a fight because she didn't want me there. Duh. We also get into a fight at a, got into a fight at a family cookout because once again she was saying smart shit, talking about she's trying to get her family back. She is um, together, and all the baby needs is her. She also had the nerve to say to say that I'm replaceable. You have been, and that my boyfriend's never going to stop loving her. He hasn't. So I snapped and damn near killed her. Sorry, not sorry, but anyways, Keisha and Mo, what should I do? I don't want to leave him. He's honestly the first man I have ever put my all into. He's everything I ever prayed for. But I mean, this bitch is killing our vibe. <clears throat> I don't want to be ignorant or selfish and say it's either me or her because even though she's trifling, she's still the mother of my boyfriend's child and deserves to get to know her daughter like I know her daughter. But enough is enough. Please help me. How do I get her out of my way? Can I please start because this is a burden in me? You are not together in a relationship no more. This is not the man of your fucking dreams. Because any man that allows a bitch that, first of all, dipped out on his ass for a fucking, I don't know how long, and then came back into the picture, didn't even bother to tell your ass, is not no damn Prince Charming, honey. Get it to fuck together. They are already back in a relationship, already fucking and sucking, and they are waiting for you to realize that you are out the fucking door. He is not the man of your dreams, honey. Because any person that would do that to you is a shit, first of all. Like, oh my God, y'all are making my head hurt with this dumb shit. They are back together. That is their baby's mama. First of all, just because she was gone don't mean that you was ever a mother to that little girl. Y'all only been together, like you said, a year. You ain't that little baby mama, like... I can't. Monique, go ahead. And you know what? Mm -hmm. Now that I'm thinking about it, she's just sitting there comf comfortably in the fucking apartment when you and come over and bring your stuff. He's allowing it. He that allowed girl ain't never play. been there. That girl ain't been gone no fucking year and she came in there and played with that baby that freely and that baby uh, wasn't crying or no shit like that or acting up. Babies don't play that damn freely with fucking mm -hmm. strangers like that. Mm -hmm. Come the fuck on now. And the only thing you talking about is if you put your all into stop putting your all into these fucking boyfriends, bitches. Boyfriends are not supposed to get husband benefits. That's why the motherfuckers Ooh. never become husbands. Ooh. And you moving in there with him is not gonna speed up the motherfucking Ooh. process, especially with his baby mama in the motherfucking next room. Kinks are scared. <laughs> Girl, like like really, what are you doing, Thomas, if you move yourself so all y'all gonna stay together? Y'all just sister one wife. big happy ass family. You a sister wife. You understand? If you don't move now. the fuck on, a year ain't shit. Girl, fuck that. Ain't no. There is no way in hell. Stop shacking up, ladies, please. Mm -hmm. 
please. I mean, I've done it. Mm -hmm. I've done it. And I have never seen in any situation where this shit ends up in marriage. Never, ever, 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 Never let a nigga move in again. I ain't even let my husband stay with me. No. How about nigga, that? We gonna get together once we married, sealed, signed, delivered. I'm yours. <laughs> come motherfucker, no. Come over on the weekend. Yeah, but. like, he allowed this girl to come back in. Didn't even give you the honor or respect of telling you this bitch was about to come back. He don't give a shit about you. That ain't you no know why? Because, because while that bitch was gone for a year, he was still calling and texting this motherfucker. You yeah, can come back. I'll take about. care of you. You can stay here. And yeah. he was hoping that your ass would be wise enough once you saw her in the room playing with that damn baby, that you was gonna move the fuck, take your shit back out the house. Anywho, yeah, y'all are not in a relationship no more. You need to move the fuck on. If you want to continue over there fighting for your life like you in fucking WWE, then continue on with that shit. She gonna continue to whoop your ass, continue to give you that mouth, and you gonna continue to be miserable. And it's gonna finally come a day where you gonna say, look, we're back together again. We're about to get married. I'm about to make my family work. And then you gonna be sitting there crying. So if that's what you want. Niggas, he right, I mean, like, don't you have to go to work sometimes? You think that they, they ain't, you know, when they in the house together, that like, girl? This is what that bed doing. This is what her ass doing. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. Don't switch your wrist. This is she fucking your boyfriend. <laughs> I'm sorry. She said he will never stop loving her. And, I mean, the proof yeah, is in the He probably had, did he tell her, I love you. And then what? Then my thing is, what did he say when he said that you didn't say that he said he didn't? You ain't love say you ain't say nothing, nothing about, about what him. he because he ain't saying nothing. He ain't saying shit. He's sitting back loving this shit. Mm -hmm. Both of y'all looking stupid. So that's it. Next question. Is this it? Yeah. Oh, dear Keisha Mo, my question is, how do you stay so positive? I feel like I'm at a breaking point in my life. Every time I try to get ahead, the devil just knocks me 10 steps back. Mm. The only thing I got good going on in my life is my relationship. I sit back and watch everyone around me, the life I was supposed to have. I feel like most of my problems are connected with my sexuality and the struggles I still have with it. My girlfriend really doesn't know how depressed I am. Stop that ass. My boss is picking on me at my job in the process of searching for a new one with no luck, shaking my head. I have no family or friends to really lean on except my mother which whom I try not to bother with this sort of thing because of her ailing health. So I try to appear happy all the time to keep her blood pressure down, and last but not least, no children, which is a really big struggle for me. It's so hard being an African-American lesbian. I can't find a donor to save my life. This one particular guy that agreed to help me started to like me. I just really can't win for losing. I hold all of this in. Maybe if I had a shoulder to cry on, it wouldn't be so bad. Y'all just don't understand. I try so hard to live right and live like a Christian. It's really just getting me nowhere. Have either one of you ever been in a place like this? Advice. Okay. Um, the reason why I stay so positive because I have no other choice but to stay positive. I can't afford to walk around being sad being depressed, I suffer from anxiety attacks. I have medication that I have to take if I get into that state. And when I have an anxiety attack or panic attack, I become bedridden for weeks at a time. Can't move, shaking. Can't, I have a child. I can't even let my mind go there. And another thing that keeps me positive, of course, is staying in the Word. Get up every morning and listen to somebody's sermon. I don't give a fuck who it is. Listen to some kind of word and getting that encouragement in your mind every morning. That will set your tone. It's like they say, eat breakfast that sets the tone for your day. Work out that sets, sets the tone for your day. Get that word every morning. And then another key thing is having people around you that genuinely care about you and want to help you when you're down. When I'm down, I can call Monique and cry on her shoulder. I can call my best friend Alosha. I can call my best friend Sharissa. I can call my sister Maisha. I can call holding everything inside. You're not telling your girlfriend. That's not helping the situation any. You need to open up to your <laughs> girlfriend and tell her what is going on so she can be there and be supportive of you. I know it's hard to find a donor to get a baby, but everything happens in due time. You don't need no baby right now because you're mentally not even prepared and ready for it. What you going to have a baby and need to be depressed because you can't find a job or depressed about life and this, this and that? You're going to get that engine to your baby. You want to feed that into your baby life. Everything happens at due time for a reason. Mm -hmm. I call my, I call, I call Keisha a lot of times. We talk about, because we've had some of the same type of hardships and stuff like that. And we're very and we have hardships one. now. Oh, uh, let me say this real quick. We get on her and y'all might think that, oh, they so fabulous and they just so, you know, got it together. We are struggling right about now. It is hard out here for a motherfucking pimp. I might got these fair ways, but it took a lot to get this. 
Yeah, because people right. just automatically assume that we just, after we make these videos, we go to the club and, and eat kick caviar. It and, and, yeah, like. And popping bottles. Bitch, I can't pop a water bottle right now. <laughs> like, it is hard for everybody right about now. But I have to stay happy. And then another thing that makes us happy, we get on the phone, we talk about shit that we know about to happen. Or we speaking into existence. Girl, we're going to be in Hollywood. Yes, listen yeah. to that Jamal Bryant that was on yesterday. Did you yes. know you need to hear that when they ooh, they were speaking to you? Me and Monique were just in the room before we started filming this talking about a fifteen thousand dollar tub that she won't. <laughs> we and, gonna get that. And I'm tub. getting that damn tub. Exactly. It's like we happen. talk about things that we see and want for our future and that makes us happy. That makes us um next one. Hey Keisha Mo, my name is Lena. I just wanna start off by saying that I love both of y'all advice and style. Thank you. I'm 19 years old and I will be beginning my second year of college this fall. I'm majoring in fa fashion merchandising and I have dreams on becoming a fashion buyer at a major department store. On to my question. My friends who are all my age always make jokes that my standards for guys are too high for my age, but I don't think so. My standards are simple. Have a job or be in school, no kids, a car, or at least a license, solid career goals, no dreadlocks, and loves his mom. In my opinion, I think my friend's standards are too low. They give anybody the time of day, and I mean... Anybody. <laughs> Most of the dudes they date that I meet call me stuck up, but I'm not at all. Well, maybe a little. I just feel like I'm worth more than what most guys my age are offering. I just feel what Gwen Guthrie said. Ain't nothing going on but the rent. So my question for you ladies are, do you think my standards are too high for my age? Or do you think I should ignore what my good goofy friends are saying and keep doing me? Thanks. Thank you in advance, Lena. No, I don't think you should lower your standards. Men have standards. I don't give a damn how how bum bummy he is. I don't care how. All men have standards. And I think that if we had more standards and, and look for what the hell we wanted in, in men and then and be more selective, then we wouldn't end up in some of these fucked up relationships that we end up in. Fucking up our whole lives. So I don't think you should change for nobody. I don't care how young you are or how old you are. I have enough time, I guess, for this, some couple of updates. So, let's get into the updates. We weren't going to do this, but we still have some battery left, so we're going to do it. Uh, the first update is from CC Sierra. I'm not hitting that in there. Uh -huh. <laughs> we love CC. She is a frequent viewer of the Ask Keisha Mo Show, and she has become our friend. Um, she says... Miss Key, you are every fuck. No, she said, Miss Key, you are fucking everything. You know, when we read CC, so we gotta read together. Miss Key, you are fucking everything. The latest video uplifted my soul. Your life and outlook on it makes so much sense to me. I'm older than you, and you inspired me to be a greater person, and also want you to know that I'm happy for your success. You and Mo changed my life, no joke. It makes me want to be a better person in life. I can and will use my God-given talent to make life better. You and Mo are my life coaches. Miss Mo, you are so fucking smart and right on and just fucking amazing. Red flags, I watch for them now. I know y'all been through some shit and the young will make amazing examples of women and friends. Love you guys. My soul sisters, Keisha and Mo fix my life because I want to change and do better in my life and that's all because of y'all. Keisha, your voice made... Me cry on that key video. Keisha sings the blues. Oh, my favorite Mo quote is the pro. <laughs> you are amazing, Mo, Nick, and I love you guys. And yes, I love Body Party by Sierra. I know it. And I'm a hood bitch, but not for long. Y'all changed my outlook on everything. We love you. Cece. We love you. That's the type of shit we want to hear when we hear read an update. We are here to try to encourage you all, inspire you all. So that is great that she is now looking out for these soft ass niggas. She getting her life together. Go ahead on, Cece. Like that really meant a lot to us. Like that brought tears to my eyes when I read it. So thank you so much, Cece. We love you, Shana. Remember on the last one we said her mother wrote us to give her her side of the. Thing. Remember, Tashana is the young lady who is working with her boss or fucking her boss, and her boss is her sister's, her I mean, her, her best friend's former daddy, best friend. yeah, former best friend's daddy. And she was trying to figure out how to tell the daughter about it and trying to figure out how to get her mom and them to come on board. And mama ain't feeling old daddy can't at all. So Tashana wrote us. Tashana's mama. Yes, Tashana wrote us and gave us her update after watching the episode and everything. So here it is. Okay, dear Keisha and Mo, I know you and Mo went in on me, but I am in love and happy. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you guys were right about how his daughter would take it. She's not speaking to her dad, and she called me all kind of hoes. Mm. Someone I work with told her. She was pissed. She was trying to fight me in a place of business and approach me on the showroom floor in front of customers' employees. She went in. Her father stepped in, and she started crying when he told her she was wrong for, for confronting me there. But she will need him sooner or later. Oh, no, you didn't. Plus, my mama went ham on him at a family gathering, throwing a cup of liquor in, in his face. And when I defended him, defended what was mine, she oh. told me to get out of her house. Okay. Well, she should have. Uh, it was a scene, but I moved out. She told me off as I was leaving. I am getting married, and I'm happy. I can't with my mom. <laughs> She's never happy with anything I do. I decided to love him no matter what. He treats me like a lady. My mother hurt me with her words. I want to know what happened to the unconditional love a mother is supposed to have since she watches the show as well. She had my whole family watching. They called me and took shots at me, but this question is not to Keisha or Mo, it's to my mother. Where is my unconditional love? Thanks for all y'all advice, but I'm going to follow my heart. It's to Shauna over everything. From now on, P.S. I am not with him for gifts. It's just nice to have someone that's that sees how hard I work and wants to spoil me. I buy gifts too and I love him to death. Hmm. Okay. Anything you need to say? Um, you speak about your mother's unconditional love. Your mother sees everything that we see and more because you are her daughter and she knows you better than anybody next to God. Um, don't ever, ever burn any bridges with your mother. It's going to come a time. I mean, she's not guaranteed to be here. I don't have my mom. I wish my mom could call me and say, when I was with this last person, like, you, you know, leave him alone. I see something wrong with him. I don't like him. And your mother is a good... A lot of times... Your mother can tell your mother can tell you predict a whole lot of things in your life. Mm. A whole lot of things in your life. And please listen to me. You are not getting married. That's not gonna happen. You moved over there and shacked up with that man. There's no reason for him to marry you now. Mm -hmm. But I mean, no matter what we say, you're still going to stay with this man. I am going to tell you, I'll keep you in my prayers because I would hate for you to burn bridges with your mother and something happened to her. You talking about some shit that's gonna eat you alive. Hmm. You better get it together. Don't do your mama like that. I don't give a fuck what he doing, how much he say he love you. He don't love you better than your damn mama. So get it together. Um, I want to touch on what you said about the, his daughter, Tom, but she will need him sooner or later. <laughs> do you understand how that girl feels? You were her friend first and started fucking her daddy behind her back. When you said that comment, that made me feel like you got some beef or something against his daughter. I think you're a little bit jealous of her. I think that you, like Moni called on the first episode, when you first ran and wrote in to us, you wanted what that daughter had, which was that paper. And now you got it, and now you don't need her little ass no more. You use a sister to get closer to that daddy. And, then, and okay, she may need him. That door is not going nowhere. Your That's ass gonna be gone. You see, he wouldn't even tell. She had to find out from somebody else. How exactly. long they all been together before the daughter found out? If it was up to the daddy, he wouldn't have never. The only reason mm -hmm. why you're probably able to move with this man is because somebody came on out and said something to the damn daughter. Yeah, because he wasn't going to do it. So how much he love you now? Um, And as far as the stuff that's going on between you and your mom, because both of y'all have written to us at this point and given us updates. Um, I really feel like you and the mother really need to sit down and have a heart to heart conversation because both of y'all are hurting. Uh, you have hurt your mother. She has hurt you. Your Things mother's have, hurting. And, or have really been said hurting. on both parts. Both of y'all feelings are hurt. But um, you really need to go and sit down and talk to your mom because you only get one mom. And like Monique said, when she gone, you ain't gone. You're going to regret it. And all of a man. She doesn't have to approve of who you're dating. That's true. But you still need to respect your mother. If y'all don't do nothing but come to some kind of truce where you say, my mama going to be with him, can you just respect that? And she say, okay, that don't mean that she you were going to bring him over to the house or nothing like that. Yeah, that was Keep a dumb separate. move. Like, why would you take him over to a family event and you know good and damn well that don't nobody like him? Yeah, keep it separate. And your mother wrote to us again and gave us an update. And we're not going to read it because at this point, y'all need to sit down and talk or get some counseling some kind of family counseling mm -hmm. your mother wrote back to us and said that when you brought him over there to the house he was like hey my man law like who the fuck does that like he was just being antagonistic at that point and she mm -hmm. had every right in the world to throw a fucking drink in his old ass fucking face come to my house calling me no goddamn stepmom or mother-in-law what the fuck kind of shit is that um so it's your mother is her. really hurting y'all really need to sit down and talk you and her alone because it's y'all issue and really come to some kind of conclusion and deal with everything. Your mother does love you. She just wants the best for you. And I see a lot of shady ass shit in you, Tashana. You really need to get it together. Because you got some really kind of like demonic shady ass shit going on in you. And I know where that 
that comes from because I used to be you. It used to be fuck everybody else. I'm gonna do me, and guess what? You are gonna be lonely and sad by yourself. You better watch it. That's yes. shady demon. It's something else. You better. Yes. Get and I, don't, I really don't like the way you treating his daughter. That girl is hurting too, just like your mother's hurting. Put yourself and her in both their If she was fucking your daddy, how would you feel if she was fucking your daddy? And you had to find out from somebody else at your job that she was fucking your daddy, and your daddy was taking her on trips, buying her cars, and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Put yourself and in her about situation. marrying your daddy. Exactly. Like what? And being your stepmom. Mm-hmm. Like put yourself in other people's shoes and think outside the box. And stop thinking about you. And then that little line at the end when you talking about some, it's just nice to have somebody see how hard I work. Girl, bye. You like them damn gifts. You want them gifts. And that's mainly the reason why you're there is because of the, the, the gifts. And you buy gifts too. But what, that check he give you? You ain't doing shit at that job. Girl, that, I know what that is. That's buying him a few things just so he don't get... Uh, wind of that the fact that you only there for the gifts, right? And that you only use for the money. I know that you fry some chicken, buy this nigga a t-shirt, mm-hmm. so he can stick care about it. Um, if you have a question for Ask Keisha and Mo, please send them to Ask Keisha and Mo at yahoo.com. If you have an update, please send them to Ask Keisha and Mo.com. And if you know one of the people that sent us in an email, please give us your side of the equation and send that to Ask Keisha and Mo at yahoo.com. My birthday is next week. They're throwing me a surprise birthday party this weekend. It will be videoed. It will be fabulous. Yeah, I'm glory. She better be a motherfucking party. Yeah, I'm glory. Everybody gonna die. We gonna have cupcakes on my patio. <laughs> <laughs> Get this damn dog away from me. Uh, so, stay tuned for my birthday party. It's gonna be fun. That's the end of this episode. We love you all. Bye. Bye. Ha ha ha.